Today we are building an amazing system with a limited edition motherboard. I hope you all enjoy. I also have one more thing to tell you guys. Today's video sponsor is Raid Shadow Legends. Raid's now got over 600 champions from unique factions. Build your team to fight bosses in the world of Teleria. Use my links down below to download Raid yourself to PC or mobile. Today, let's meet Fantasy's favorite bad guys, the Orcs. But in Raid, they're not all bad. They were created by the Dark Lord Sirith. After a brutal war, their land is no more and they're just trying to survive. Play the full campaign to learn the full story. They look really cool and you can see how each orc is influenced by its tribal design. Here is what I love about Raid. They offer a ton of in-game events, champion combination and countless tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, PvP arena matches and more. I started playing the game around 10 or 11 months ago and I've collected quite a few epic and legendary champions. This is the best time to get started in Raid and if you click my link in the video description or you scan my QR code on screen, you'll get up to $30 worth of extra bonuses. We're talking a free champion Virgis, 200k silver, one energy refill and one XP boost and one ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here and only for the next 30 days. I'll see you there. This is the Coolmaster Half 500. A mid-tower case with a front panel mesh, two pre-installed 200mm ARGB fans and a single 120mm ARGB fan at the rear as well as the pre-installed hard drive cage fan which is actually used to direct cool intake air right onto the GPU. We'll be removing this for our build. The front IO does have USB Type-C and two USB Type-A ports. You can also fit dual 360mm radiators inside for plenty of cooling. The Power Splash Shroud also is removable and there is a pre-installed RGB fan hub at the back which supports four fans and five RGB connections. I would love to see this controller improved to at least support seven of each. Majority of people will have more than four fans in their systems. They can buy splitters, however, that's just another cost and hassle for the customer. These are the Coolmaster Sickle Flow 120 ARGB fans. And taking a look at the specs and comparing them with other brands, I would say that they are fairly average performance wise. Certainly not a super high end fan. I was not a fan of the white color due to the fact that the fan itself, the wire sleeve, and the connector are all different shades. The fans also have more of a cream color and this is really noticeable when comparing the fans to the case color. I also prefer fans that don't feel so plastic and I also don't like the sticker that's been used. It just feels a little bit tacky in my opinion. The ARGB in action however is really nice and subtle. The blades pick up the lighting really well and the wires actually have RGB splitters built into them which actually helped with the RGB hub situation. I decided to pair these fans with the EK Waterblocks SE360 radiator. The static pressure of these fans is fairly decent, meaning that it would have no issues pushing air through the higher fin density of the SE360. Higher fin density means you are effectively creating more cooling surface area within the same area constraints. You just need to make sure that your fans can handle that compactness of the fins and get that air through to keep the loop nice and cool. The ASRock Z690 Aqua is a limited edition motherboard with only 500 units made. It comes packed full of features including built-in Wi-Fi 6E, two Thunderbolt 4 Type-C, plenty of USB 3.2 Type-A, 10 gig LAN, an OLED for information display, 20 power phase design, an OC button, and its main feature, the all copper nickel plated cooling block. The motherboard is super sleek and minimal with its RGB accents, so I think it'll fit in nicely into this system. I decided to pair this system up with the Intel Core i7 12700K CPU. I'll be using the mid to high end RTX 3080 and I think this CPU will complement that nicely. The 12700K has 12 cores with 8 of them being performance and 4 being efficient. This means we have a total of 20 threads. Installation has been made a lot easier with the notches on the CPU being made to only go into the socket one way. Just line up the arrows in the corner with the arrow on the socket.
This is the Corsair MP600 1TB NVMe SSD. It has a Gen 4 mid-tier drive with read speeds of 4950 megabytes per second and write of 4250 megabytes per second. I already have Windows pre-installed on this drive, which is the primary reason why I decided to use this. I don't really need any more storage because this is more of a display PC and it will be taken apart in a few days time. 32 gigabytes is plenty of RAM for this system. We went with the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB DDR5 RAM. This particular set is 5600 megahertz and is mainly all wide in design, which I think really suits this motherboard due to the fact that I cannot really find any RAM at the moment that matches with the motherboard color scheme. For the GPU, I tried to keep it as white as possible for this system. I went with the Asus ROG Strix RTX 3080 in white. I would consider this card to be a mid to high end card, making it the perfect pairing with the 12700K CPU. The card has 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory and clock speeds of 1935 MHz in OC mode. It does require three 8 pin connectors for power. Our only white pumperous combo that we own at the moment is the Corsair Hydro X XD5. The pump has PWM control and the reservoir has built in RGB lighting, however we will not be using that for this particular build. The reservoir can hold 330 milliliters of water, so I think that is big enough to fill up the empty space to the right of our system. The pump cables are sleeved, which is fantastic because a lot of companies leave the ugly red and black or yellow and black cable on display. Powering the system, we have the Cooler Master MWE Gold Rated 1050 watt fully modular power supply. 1050 watts gives us plenty of headroom for our system even if we decide to do some upgrading further down the line. The power supply comes with a silent operating fan with smart temp controlling feature. The power supply is also backed by a 10 year warranty.
Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this build video. If you did, consider subscribing and consider joining our Discord. Over on Discord, we've got monthly giveaways that we are hosting. I'd love to see you all over there after this video is finished, so be sure to join. Link will be down below. Specs will be in the description as well, and if you'd like to help support the channel, Patreon or YouTube channel memberships is the best way to do that. Those links will be down below, and it helps us to afford builds like what you just saw, custom parts and acrylic pieces, paint, things like that. So it's greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments down below, and we'll see you all in the next one.